Welcome to Sentimental Simmer, a podcast made for emotionally attached simmers and storytellers with wild imaginations. I'm your host, Gloria, and I run Yellow Llama Co., a planner shop made to help simmers play with purpose. Every week, I talk all about things sim life planning, storytelling, and memory keeping. I'll also brainstorm new ways to obsess over our pixel people, whether they be in The Sims or another life sim game. And now let's get into it. Welcome to the Sentimental Simmer Podcast. Keeping to the theme of storytelling in The Sims, today we're going to talk about the two maybe most common themes we play in the game, either wholesome or chaotic or flash spicy, (laughs) but we'll get into that. We simmers are notorious for the wild shenanigans we get up to in the game. A sim can never know if they will be part of a cozy and wholesome story or find themselves at the bottom of a pool in a basement dungeon, or sometimes both. We can have a lot of fun nurturing or nixing our sims, but what's the story behind these cozy or sometimes deranged scenarios? Why is it that we tend to fall into one of those two, so our storylines, and why, I mean, let's be honest, why do they always end up chaotic? (laughs) I always end up adding some extra spice to mine. I don't know, I just can't stay cozy for too long. In terms of wholesome gameplay, I'm talking about your classic family gameplay, you know, the Hallmark movie kind of storylines where... You know, there might be a little bit of conflict, but in the end, it's it's all really honky-dory. And I think for the most part, it's building a family and and a cozy home and watching them thrive. I think legacy gameplay is definitely cozy and wholesome gameplay, though, of course, it can go the other way around as well, of course. So in essence, wholesome gameplay in The Sims is relaxing. It is being kind to your sims and giving them what's best for them, giving them a lovely life. That could be a family or that could even be going on vacation a lot and traveling and being this, you know, successful baddie, whatever. In essence, the sim is living a good life and you're helping them and you're nurturing them and you're taking care of them. And that's a lot of fun. It can also be very satisfying. I'm thinking about like sometimes like Tamagotchi pets. It's very satisfying to take care of them and, and keep them alive and feed them and play with them. And I feel like it's maybe the same with The Sims. It's it's fun to give them the best and a storyline that leads to a happy ending. When I think wholesome gameplay in The Sims, my mind instantly definitely goes to that classic family gameplay. But there are also other ways to play wholesome. For example, if you want to stick to family gameplay to add something different to it instead of, you know, just straight up getting married, having kids and growing old, um, you could also play a blended family where, you know, you have two sims that fall in love that happen to already have children of their own. And then when they marry and come together, move in with each other, then they're basically joining two families. Or maybe you could adopt instead of having kids the traditional way. That could be something fun. And you could think of a story of why, where this kid came from. Maybe it's a kid from another family in the in the world, you know, not just from out of nowhere. I don't actually know. Like, I think in, I don't remember if it was Sims 2 or Sims 3, if your sim... If the if social services took the sim away, the the child, then that child would be in like a, a bucket of kids for adoption. So if another household was adopting children, they had a chance, I think with Sims 3, they had a chance of getting that child that was taken away, which I think is super cool. What a storyline, right? That kid would then see their actual birth parents in the real world as well. They can bump into them. And yeah, that could you could that could, that's a whole nother route maybe almost chaotic but it, you can make it wholesome you can make go full circles so that that child can be happy in the new family and and maybe reconnect with their biological parents later down the line when the biological parents are able to get their you know things together and they're not you know not being able to take care of kids anymore you know how it is in some of the games it was actually quite hard to take care of the kids so i mean no judgment there. But uh, yeah, that's oh, a fun way you could play the game in, in a wholesome scenario ending. Or you could dedicate your next gaming session to creating cozy holidays. I mean, we don't only have, of course, Harvest Day or, or you know, Christmas. We could create other holidays where traditions, I think there's a bonfire tradition in The Sims 4, but that, that could be a tradition where people are standing around the fire and then other cozy things like I don't know, maybe dancing or sharing. I think they can be thankful in the... Uh, I think that's a tradition because I think that's even part of our spe- uh, tradition. But you can create something special to your game, maybe special to a family. 
And that's another way to add on the wholesome goodness in your game is by creating holidays that encourage your sims to be fun, friendly, and happy. Or how about you could play households full of elderly sims like a la Golden Girls. Each could have their own personality that's unique to them that makes them maybe one is quirky, one is sassy, one is a bit introverted. And um, that could be fun. I, I love Golden Girls. Definitely a recommendation if you're maybe younger and you don't know. Golden Girls is a super cute series with a bunch of old ladies living their best lives. I think after, I'm pretty sure after retirement because they're pretty old. Um, but it's super funny and cute and definitely wholesome. And I also think we don't play enough with elderly sims. I mean, I can speak for myself. I definitely don't play enough with elderly sims. I kind of forget them along the way. And also, I don't play them as ever really the main character. I usually play them... They're a, a grandparent of someone. They're part of a legacy, but I don't really play them on their own. Like, have you ever started a save file with an elderly sim, like straight out of the gate? Man, like, and because I know a lot of us don't play with aging on. So the fact that they might be gone next week is not the reason not to play them. So why? That, that's actually, that's too, that's a shame. We should play more with elderly sims. And I'm sure we could get a lot of cozy gameplay out of that. They could visit their their um, grandkids. They could go on holiday a lot because they've got enough time on their hands. They could give other sims advice and and help around the community. And like I said, be in a, in a home together and do things together. Maybe now that they've got time, friendships and connection are number one on their list. And so they're out and about going to cafes, getting dinner, maybe at the local restaurant together. Maybe they join a cl or create a club and just good times, good times, wholesome, good times. Now, why I often start with wholesome gameplay, I do not know why, but I usually end up adding some conflict. I mean, it could also just be because wholesome gameplay sometimes doesn't really hold me long enough that it like it doesn't stay interesting enough long enough for me to actually want to continue playing because for me personally I need a little bit of drama I need a little bit of spice in my stories in general good story has conflict inherently but of course you can have conflict in a wholesome story as well but I don't know for some reason I always go full out like I have this one story where this woman keeps cheating and I have this mod that uh, lets people die of burning belly disease and stuff like that. And literally, if I had saved my game the last time I played, she would have lost their second husband to some sort of disease, a flu or something. And she already, of course, had a side piece. So husband number three was already lined up. But it's generally a wholesome story, I'd say, when I'm playing with that family. But for some reason, something's neat, something like spicy and chaotic always sneaks in. I don't know why. Maybe one could dive in another episode about the psychology behind all of this. I mean, I'm sure we play wholesome gameplay because of the relaxation aspect of it. The same reason why we play cozy games. It's it's just chill, right? And it's the same reason maybe during Christmas why I'm so sucked into Hallmark movies. They're just it just gives you a warm and gooey feeling. And I mean, what, what level of achievement do you feel when you get to help a sim live their best life? aka your best life, <laughs> or maybe just a any minute by his best life, okay? I don't want to live all the lives all my sims be living. I don't want to be an astronaut, okay? I don't want to own a restaurant, but I know my sim think they want to, so that's the life I'm giving them. And it just, I feel so accomplished when they end up, you know, meeting their goals and reaching their dreams. Maybe that's why wholesome gameplay is so fun, because it's kind of in real life as well. You want the best for yourself, you, their friends and family, and so... Maybe that's why we lean towards that. But like I said, I end up, I always end up pivoting to chaotic gameplay eventually. I don't know. Maybe it's just fun to be bad without a consequence or to add a bit of spice to a story and, and add that drama. I think it's also great stress release. Inherently, like I said, conflict is fun. It just adds to a story. And, or you could go all in, whether at the very beginning or maybe mid wholesome gameplay. You can say, you know what? What are some chaotic stories I can play now like for example i know in the sims dungeons are always good fun i found a really brilliant underground city made by kelsey i found this on tiktok she had made a it almost looks like a mall like an underground city really with little rooms and also like areas of activity for men to be captive in store your captive men i don't know i mean what could be a storyline behind that <laughs> apart from the just the fun that there is to be had with hosting a dungeon and keeping sims captive but you could have like a twist to the standard bachelorette storyline like maybe you're capturing men 
or your sim, obviously you would never do this in real life. Your sim is capturing men to that are forced to woo her. And hey, I haven't really gone further with that storyline, but hey, you could jump in game. And like I said in the last episode, the game is your improv partner. So run with it, see where it goes. But that could be fun. Dungeon gameplay is classic. Uh, classic sims. Or I still haven't gotten over this darn build by Snarky Witch, but you could run a cult. She built this brilliant cult build. I think that that goes another step further than dungeon build. Because in a dungeon build, you're holding sims captive against their will. But in a cult build, you're kind of still holding them captive mentally, maybe. But they think they want to be there. But in the end, they're really just for you. And so it just adds more to the story, right? It's not just a space to hold sims captive. It's more than that, it's like a system that you can use to benefit your sim, to put money in their pocket, cheap workforce, just to enjoy that power play. Definitely a great stress release after work, maybe, to go into your game and have your cult sim, you know, just do their thing. Or I think also another very popular way to play the game. And I must admit, when I played Barbies, I, I love the storyline. And I think there's a lot of overlap also between simmers and this topic. True crime. Serial killer stories. So you could have like a serial killer that has a cause, though. I really, really enjoyed the series Dexter. And so you could have like a Dexter style sim who has a thirst to unalive under other sims, but they have like a moral compass or moral code. They only target those that they believe deserve it, like maybe evil sims or sims with certain traits that are maybe negative. If you want to add to it, there are also mods that add more violence to the game, but you can also kill sims in creative ways without any mods. So of course, your standard to lock them in a room and starve them, but if you want to be even more diabolical, you could create an outside area in the middle of your home so you've got like an inner garden so to say and then during winter you could lock sims out when they're in that winter garden and then they freeze to death or you could have like an evil chef that is trying to kill the competition and they serve them up puffer fish classic sims for death possibility um, yeah you can really get creative with this with so it could either be a silver killer or just hmm, somebody in general who just one particular sim is on their hit list and they need to get rid of them. Yeah, I would definitely say killing sims is probably top one of chaotic gameplay. You can get creative with it and keep them captive in a dungeon first or have them work for you first. But in no shame in my game, I have unalived a sim or two in my 20 year. No, it's going on 24 now. I've been playing since 2000. Since my 24 year history with the sims just one or two sims just just a couple but yeah i can definitely recommend some other scenarios you could play if you're not in the mood for your hallmark movie style gameplay you want you know something more wild and crazy well you could do a social experiment where you have like big brother style a house full of sims with conflicting traits so you've got neat and you know messy sims together with good versus evil and all sorts I think this is probably the most fun in The Sims 3 because their traits in that game, traits really matter and really have a huge impact. But you don't intervene. You just observe and you watch as things fall to pieces. Keep into Big Brother instead of it being a social experiment. You could also do something more of a survival of the fittest. So here the plot twist is not adding a bunch of Sims into a, a room or in a space that have conflicting traits. It's about adding just any random Sim or more into a space that has like no resources just see who dies first you could also have like a storyline about a dystopian society where bad things have just happened to the world like maybe post-apocalypse there are a lot of save files that are great for that that you could use for that type of storytelling but that definitely adds chaos to the mix and then you can imagine all the, the terrible ways people are to each other in this type of environment and you can play that out in your game that's definitely not wholesome anymore okay because sims can get primal and real when they got no resources they got no home they got no place to stay when they got nothing to lose and so yeah you can add conflict there i mean there's a reason we love zombie movies and and the world movies and horror movies we can enjoy both right we can enjoy the wholesome gameplay and the cozy gameplay and at the same time I have a safe file that is uh, less kind to our sims and and play out those maybe less so sunny scenarios. Oh, and even you can also turn things around. It doesn't have to stay chaotic and, and dark and dim. Like, you know, coming back to that post-apocalypse world, maybe 
a lot of uh, bad stuff went down in the first half of your gameplay. <laughs> few Sims lost their lives. Few Sims lost their homes or whatever. Broken relationships. But then you can turn things around. You can turn chaotic into wholesome. You can play that way around too. I think in general, whenever you're playing the game, and if you're not like playing a strictly scripted storyline, it can really go anywhere. It can go from wholesome to chaotic, but also from chaotic to wholesome and back again, right? Maybe your serial killer can redeem himself or that previous dungeon has turned into an athletic space <laughs> and the serial killer gives up their evil ways and decides, hey, you know what? I will get through this urge instead with more productive hobbies like weightlifting and I don't know, just something that doesn't involve harming other sims. Whether wholesome or spicy or chaotic, all gameplay is great and fun. And the beauty of it is in The Sims, it can be anything you want or all of the above. In the next episode, I'm going to dive into how to use plot theory to inspire your Sims gameplay. So sometimes you might feel stuck and not know where to go next with your storyline. You know, sometimes... The game doesn't give you enough prompts to continue, especially in The Sims 4. Improv partners a bit could use some work. In the next episode, I'm going to talk about how you can use tools that creative writers use and that how you can translate that to your own gameplay to keep things going. Until then, happy simming.